As entertainment, I served on uh, membership. I remember writing, uh, the f it was amazing to me that we had membership problems always. And I took over membership when I was a marketing guy. And I said, you know, the people here don't realize what the, what the issues are. So we put together a rather long, lengthy letter about membership to the, to the folks and recommended a campaign to get them in. And I had people come up to me and say, I didn't, I didn't know we needed members here. You know, I just thought it kind of was so attractive that it was no problem. But we determined, first of all, what the average age was, what the mean was, and where the profile was, and recognized that the club was aging and we had to move it down. And we, so we put emphasis on uh, the younger side, as you always have to. And um, Lakewood right now, for instance, uh, I, I was told recently the average age is 59, which is nine years older than it needs to be to be healthy. It should be at a 50, uh, age 50. And if you get it down to 49, that'd be even better. But um, that's a major problem that needs to be recognized. And maybe there'll be a flushing of older members with what's going on now, and maybe you'll get it down there where you need it. But th that will signal then, that will be the signal that the club will be changing culture because you'll be bringing in today's values rather than the values of the elders. But generally clubs are run on the values of the elders because they hold the, the power and the traditions in their hands. And uh, that's what you learn through membership. Very important stuff. Served on the golf committee, or served chaired of the golf committee under uh, uh, Jerry Boykin, when Jerry Boykin was professional and um, uh, I learned one thing, that the uh, golf course is sacrosanct in, in, sacrosanct in many ways. One of them is uh, the members' notions of what the handicaps ought to be per hole. I mean, how they should be ranked. And um, <clears throat> the USGA set up a system for <clears throat> uh, arbitrating that by, by statistical analysis and um, so we went through that step, that process under Jerry and re-ranked the course and did it right and got number five up to uh, the proper uh, handicap level that it should be, which was not politically correct. So there are political consequences uh, to handicaps that you can never understand. But uh, Vic Ermel was on the other side of the f political fence at that time, and he decided that his statistical methodology would be better than mine. <laughs> so he ran an ad hoc uh, statistical committee outside. It maybe was after I was off, but Vic, uh, Vic re-rated the course based on his approach, not, not recommended by the USGA, but it worked. And Vic got the politics for the handicaps back where he wanted or where the club wanted them at the time. I don't know if you were president then or... No. Who knows? <laughs> huh? No, I didn't have that, that <laughs> distinction at that time. Well, whatever it was, uh, I've never forgiven you for that, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> so... The women's influences that had brought it up. Yeah, <laughs> well, whatever. Anyhow, um, so that was a golf committee. Uh, there was a deceased member of the golf committee who actually, he was a lawyer also, who uh, did the minutes taking for the golf committee. And he used to write, he used to write things that were embarrassing to me, of course, personally, but um, about what went on in the committee meetings and would distribute these, you know, and he, um, I've always, uh, part of my lore is that, I, and I should not talk too much longer, but is that I've always been on the outside of a certain group of people at Lakewood. And, um, and my mentors there were always on the opposite side of that group as well. And so, and I, I, one of the things that I hope will uh, pass at Lakewood soon is that division uh, between the backroom guys and the rest of the membership. 
it's, it's something that needs to go away for its survival and its health. And the club cannot be run from a closet. It has to be run openly and transparently forever. I learned that uh, as chairman of the Long Range Planning Committee, which I served for eight years. Uh, Vic served on that committee with me and uh, we put together a tremendous plan for the club to survive in its traditional way, uh, which the which has, that board that that plan has been shelved, and uh, not that it needs to be revisited because we're going in a different direction. The culture is changing, and um, uh, and it's apparently what the membership wants, and they can support it the best they they wish. And, it just will not be appealing as a country club to many people. The, uh, the other committees I've served on, uh, I served on the board uh, for, I believe it was a four year period. I can't remember why four years, but um, I, um, I served as secretary to the board, which is an interesting and challenging uh, uh, role to record what goes on there and try to keep it running by Robert's rules, but we succeeded in doing that, and um, it made for fairly focused board meetings, issues oriented, um, and uh, very important to keep it running that way. There should never be alcohol served at those meetings, never, and they should be, uh, they should be well attended and taken seriously by whoever is elected to what is really a place of honor to represent uh, as many families and as many people as we do on that board. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, presidents, I think, all take it very seriously, and uh, I think they have for the most part. Several have not followed the rules, and it has always led to uh, destructive uh, things to the club. The rules are there f to be lived by for all generations, and I hope they will be. Um, <clears throat> I've served tennis, I've served, I've served basically uh, on every committee out there except Greens during my, t during my life. And I've enjoyed the relationships, uh, the friendships, uh, the, the goodwill of uh, everybody who, who wants to make the club a success. And I wish everybody long years of success in the future. And I hope that on the 100th anniversary, uh, I'm alive to see it, so. Best wishes to everybody. Well said. Thank you very much for your time, Dave. And, uh, excellent job. Thank you.